This is stage three. This is stage three of a uh, multi-stage tournament. There are three stages. The music needs to chill out a bit. She needs to chill out just a bit. I have my master volume higher when I ladder, so I can hear my music. Um, so that's the explanation behind that. Um, yes, yeah, so this is a three-stage tournament. Four players were invited directly into stage three. Everyone else had to qualify through either stage one or stage two. Qualifying for, qualifying for stage uh, three through stage one and two, one of them, is your green terran player, Everize. Idra was given an invite to stage three. This is a double elimination bracket. There are eight players. Yes, there are eight players in this tournament. Top three qualify for IEM China to represent the North Americas. The four invited players were Idra, the Muslim, Violet, and Dignitas Killer. The four qualified players were Trimaster, Everize, Axlav, and... Oh, man. Okay, I have to find this out. Why do I not... Suppy. Duh. Suppy. This is one best of three. The other best of threes are going on right now. Um, we don't want to make the players wait too long. And I don't want to cash up from replays because, well, that's not that fun. Uh, but we're live here with a two-minute stream delay. My name is Axel Toss. Hope to provide a, an entertaining night to you. If you're thinking about going out to see a movie, I'm glad you stayed home to watch the IEM qualifiers for the North American region for IEM China. All right, let's talk about the openings. Everybody's going for a fairly fast expansion, adding on two gases, not putting expansion down on the low ground. A lot of Terran players like to do that. Everybody's playing it a little bit more safe at this point in time. As I take a moment to see if I'm muted or not. Good, I'm not. Um, where's my chat? There it is. Alright, people saying it's laggy? Let me know if uh, that continues. It doesn't feel laggy to me, personally. Edge up putting down a really fast third hatchery. This is like a PVZ or a, a ZVP opening, I should say. Stream is stuttering. It is My most dearest, uh, complete, and sincere apologies. It should be fixed now. You haven't missed too much. Uh, both these players playing relatively standard. We see a very fast three hatchery opening here from Idra. Everize opening up with four Hellions, following it up with Cloak Banshee. Adding on a third command center as well. Idra, in the meantime, going for 1-1. Income tab shows 47 to 35, still prioritizing those drones at this point in time. Here come the Hellions over to the third base. Going right for those drones, and Idra has to be really careful here. Uh, Idra doing a decent job, didn't lose too many. Needs to be careful with those links, don't want to lose those for free. Workers killed shows 3. So three workers killed four Eberize. They're not too shabby at all of a defense for Idra, considering he took those three hatches very early. It's very, it, it's 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 relatively difficult to hold these three hatcheries this early. That's why you don't see a lot of Zerg players take a hatchery this uh, this fast at the third location. Uh, but Idra feeling confident enough in his micro and his ability to multitask, uh, and it kind of showed there. He was able to deflect that Hellion aggression uh, decently. But the true question is, can he keep it up? Eberize with five more Hellions at the Watchtower. Again, he's following it up with cloaked Banshees. So we'll have to see how uh, Idra handles that. The Banshee is already in the natural expansion of Idra. It is cloaked as well. There's no Overseer uh, in position. There's, oh my god, a lot of Jones dying at the natural expansion here from Idra. Has to be extremely careful not to lose too much. Hellions wrapping around to behind the Mineral Line. Banshee from above still doing plenty of damage. There is a Spore Crawler just now finishing in the natural expansion. Also a Spore Crawler in the main base. Banshee has six kills to his name. Layer just now finishing, so Idra can make a Spore Crawler if he should, if he so chooses. Workers killed all the way up to 21, so Everize definitely doing a good job with that drone harassment. Now coming with the Cloak Banshee to this third base, Idra does have a Spore Crawler there. Again, behind this, we had a third base go down from uh, Everize. Adding on two factories, so it looks like he wants to make a lot of Hellions throughout this game. Probably going to see a, a couple Tech Labs, maybe one Tech Lab out of, the, out of one of these factories. And then we're going to see a Blue Flame upgrade. Blue Flame Hellions, very terrifying to the, Zerg, uh, to the Zerg race, especially if you're sticking on a lean composition. So you'll see a lot of Zerg players, once they scout the Cloak Banshee tech, they'll go into Roaches, or I should say the uh, the Blue Flame Hellion tech. 
They'll go into roaches, but look at this. Already vehicle plating and vehicle weapons on the way from Everise. Agent coming forward to the watchtower and tracking down these Hellions that advance to the south side of the map, retreating from those lings. As you're trying to keep them away, but Everise doing a decent amount of damage. Income dash was 58 to 52 in favor of the green Terran player. Edge are trying to track down these cloaked banshees with his queen. Alright. Where are my mods? There are people linking stuff they shouldn't be in my chat. Ah, <sighs> that's a little bit annoying, but oh well. Alright, so Ephraim's actually doing a pretty good job in this game. I mean, he already has his third up, already saturating the gases. His upgrades for his mech is already... 1-1 one, one is about to finish. Two Thors on the way. He's going to build up a pretty scary Thor count. The question is, what can Idra do to stall Ephraim? Because you know, one of the hardest things to deal with as a Zerg player is a Terran opponent who is crazy good with their upgrades on their mech and crazy good with their Thor production. Like... One of the scariest armies you can see is like maxed mass Thor with good upgrades. Like how do you beat that as Zerg? You need like a ridiculous amount of supply to do that. You need to remax at least twice to deal with that. And something you can do to try to help your cause, I guess. Something you can do is go after the production, go after the economy. You gotta do something. You can't just let the Terran player go absolutely crazy with the Thor upgrades and let them get out about 20 and then all of a sudden you're like, well, how do I kill this? The sad truth is you can't. Unless you have, like, Neural Parasite, you get really up close with the roaches, but then again, if your opponent has repairing SUVs, it becomes even more difficult. It looks like Idra has scouted this out. He knows about the two armories, he knows about all the factories, so he should be able to try to come up with something to deal with this. Now, one strategy is roach drops. Idra, roaches in production, we have drop on the way. Mina's getting in here trying to do some damage. Um, but the question is, where does Idra drop those roaches, and will Everise be able to identify that his opponent is going for this this, this roach drop play? Everise right now taking some banshees into the main base. Oh, my scoreboard isn't up. There it is. Much better. This is the best of three. Round of eight. Idra trying to track down these banshees with these mutas. It's definitely a good reason to go over mutas. To deal with that Banshee play and drop play. Blue Flame Hellions! Oh, they're not, oh, they don't Blue Flame yet. Hellions going right into the third of Idra. Oh my god, so many drones might die here. Okay, decent splitting there from Idra. But I have a feeling uh, Everise's Blue Flame upgrade is a little bit late there. If those had Blue Flame, a lot more drones would have died. Oh man, I think Everise is in a great position here. Like, Idra has already let him do too much. Um, we're going to have to have some crazy good drop play from Idra. Because he's only on three bases, and his drone count isn't good at all. Like, he's not saturated at this guy's the third. He's going to have to remake some drones eventually. Uh, and Avarize, meanwhile, has plenty of Thors outside of his natural expansion. He's building, like, he can build four at a time here, if he wants. Uh, but he's mixing in some tanks, adding on some turrets in his natural expansion, playing as turtly as can be. But I would, too, if, my, if I knew my opponent uh, might go for roach drops. Edger coming forward here with those roaches in those overloads. Can he do enough damage? Trying to distract his, uh, his opponent with some links running into the third base. Some roaches going forward there as well. Again, just trying to distract him. Everize starting to go over there. And now Edger coming forward with these overloads. Can Everize recognize that this is happening? Kite back his Thors and, and, uh, and tanks and repair with these SCVs. Everize is going to try to do it. Edger coming forward with these roaches, dro dropping them on top of the mech army. But is it going to be enough? I don't think so. Everise just has so much stuff. One Thor going down. Idra trying to make it happen. Trying to go for those cost efficient, game, uh, the cost -efficient trades. But it's not going to be enough. And Idra just going to straight up leave the game. Everise takes game number one of this best of three. Dilk winner game two coming up of this best of three between Idra and Everise in round one. Um, stage 3 of the IEM America's Qualifier for China, I would like to take this time to remind you, if you feel like it, oops, I accidentally unvo un unvoiced someone, I need to mod you, um, if you feel like it, please feel free to go upvote the Reddit thread about this tournament, lots of great players involved.
Why didn't he invite me to a party? All right, game two coming up of this best of three in just a bit. Don't go anywhere. I just I just screwed up big time there. Uh, uh, I just I just screwed up big time. <laughs> oh, okay, just forget it and move on. Forget it and move on. Forget it and move on. God, I'm stupid. I'm so stupid. Ah! Won't happen again. <laughs> Embarrassing. Whatever. Alright, everything is, is smoothed, smoothing, smoothed out. We're all good now. We're having a good time. Welcome back to the IEM China qualifiers for the North American region. My name is Axel Toss, and this is round one, a best of three between spawning in the top left hand location of Ohana, the Green Terran player Everize. His opponent in the bottom right, it's the red player, the red zerk player I should say. Representing evil geniuses, he is Idra. This is a double elimination bracket, so if Idra loses here, it's not the end of the world, but you don't want to be thrown into the loser's bracket this early. The surprise so far here is Everize. Everize qualified th uh, for this stage through stage two. And he's now going up against one of the invited players, Idra. Everize, not one of those players you really consider to be at the top of the North American scene, but definitely making a case for himself here today. Very strong play in the last game. Idra was kind of caught off guard. And Everize just played a good game in, in, in general. We are on a two minute stream delay. So, if I talk about you in the chat, or if you say something funny in the chat and you hear me about it two minutes later, I'm, it's that's me laughing about it or whatever. Does that make sense? It's pretty confusing to think about, because my chat is real time, but you hear my voice two minutes later if I talk about the chat. Does that make sense? We're trying to ensure fairness. Uh, Idra did win game number one. Or no, what did I say? Be quiet. Everize did win game number one. Everize won game number one. Just very solid play throughout. Idra tried to go for a roach drop, had to be ridiculously cost efficient, but Everize just had way too much. Everize did a lot about, uh, or Everize I should say, did a lot of damage to Idra in the early game with that economic harass, the Hellions, and the Banshees. And now it was enough. Behind that, he went up to Mech and won the game pretty darn easily. But this is game number two. Idra has some work to do. Must win two in a row to qualify for the next round. And again, top three from this tournament will qualify for I will qualify for IEM in China. I think Idra was. I think he was one game away. I know Violet qualified, and I know Minigun qualified. I forgot who the third one was. Was it Idra? Oh man, my memory, my memory. Violet is participating because he's living in America. And he has been for a very long time. So he has been deemed eligible by the IEM administrators. Hopefully we'll see a match from him uh, today. The schedule, tentatively, is one match from the round of 16, which is this one, Idra versus Everize, or round of 8 I should say. One match, or actually both matches from the round of 4. Both round of 4 matches will be best of 5s. 
and then we'll cover the qualifying matches, the qualifying match in the lower bracket, which will be a best of five. That's the the tentative schedule right now. See what happens. But very standard openings from both these two players. Everize opening up with a very fast command center, going up to factory, adding a reactor onto that barracks. Idra, meanwhile, getting a faster gas just for that speed upgrade. It looks like that's about 40% of the way done. And now focusing pretty much exclusively on the drones. We'll have to see when Idra takes his additional gases, when he decides to take his third. And looks like he's taking one gas. The Zandy Man asks, Axeltoss, will you cast with Destiny again now that he isn't rooted? Of course, I will. If he wants to. Um. Hey, Axeltoss, come cast an event in Europe. Okay. PH Zer asks, is this live? Yes! I'm live in this game right now. I can type to these players. But it is a on a two minute stream delay to ensure fairness and uh, prevent people from being tempted to cheat. There's always that temptation. Alright. Roach one on the way here from Idra and a Baneling Nest. Very middle of the road type structures to get. And six roaches so it looks like he might try to do some really heavy two base aggression at this point. Um, he is pretty well saturated on two bases. 36 harvesters. But he's making a lot of roaches and lings. Also has a Baneling Nest on the way. So we're going to see... Some Baneling, Ling, and Roach Aggression. I'm not too ecstatic about this bunker positioning on the low ground, but I love how he has a secondary bunker back here. So if Idra tries to do some sort of that two-base aggression, Everice can just retreat to this bunker at the top, and he might be just fine. All right. Idra marching across the field up 50, 71 to 56 supply. Uh, and Everice has Cloak on the way and Banshees. And that might be incredibly scary for Idra to deal with as none of these units that he's making it can actually shoot up. Everice has to have a good idea that's going on. Oh no, he salvaged his bunker on the high ground. Now he's hastily remaking it, but Idra's going to start charging forward here, leading with the Roaches, coming forward to the Lings as well. A lot of Banelings in production. Idra going to wait for this Banelings to finish before engaging. Everice hastily returning a Banshee over here to help deal with this attack. And Idra losing a lot of units before the Banelings can actually get their damage done. Exploding into that Banshee, but they didn't do a lot of damage. One bunker is on the high ground, ready to be utilized. Idra getting uh, halted from going into the main. And Idra isn't doing a ridiculous amount of damage here. I mean, this Banshee is going to be able to clean this up. Hellions are still alive. SEV is getting killed. But is that enough? That's the question. More and more links coming forward here from Idra. 35 to 24 is his Harvester advantage. And there we go. Idra is droning behind this. So I feel like this push has paid for itself. Absolutely. Um, but the question is, how much more did Idra want to do with it? I mean, he's up 38 to 27 in the Harvesters. He has his third on the ground, but can he deal, deal with these Hellions and Banshees that are going to come to his side of the map trying to do harassment? We'll have to keep an eye on that. Two spores are on the way for Idra. There's one already in the, in the main base mineral line. One on the way in the natural expansion. And there's one in position uh, in between the natural and the third base. Idra with four roaches on the way. Doesn't have a lot of units out at the moment to deal with this aggression. One queen getting caught off guard. He needs to retreat back. Transfuse? No transfuse going down on, uh, from Idra there. He had enough energy. Barely enough energy, perhaps. Another queen falling from Idra. Everybody is doing so much damage with these aliens and banishes Idra. Hastily trying to get two additional queens on the field. Some roaches as well. And, oh my god. So many drones at the natural expansion falling. Everize with his counterattack doing so much damage to Idra. Income tab, uh, tab now shows 34 to 27. The game now swinging in Everize's favor. Workers killed 16 to 15, relatively even there. But drones a little bit more valuable than SEVs. LOL man says, Axelsoft, say my name so I can laugh in two minutes. I hope that amused you. All right. So, Idra holding off that push, but again, Everize did so much damage, and he's doing a pretty identical thing to last game. Already has 1-1 one, one on the way for those, uh, those ground vehicle upgrades. Vehicle plating, and vehicle weapons. 
Two additional factories on the way as well, so we should see an influx of tanks and Thors in the relative near future. Already has his third command center done. Might lift that over and land that at, th at the third fairly soon. Everybody's play is actually impressing me a little bit. I think Idra might be a little bit, uh, a little bit intrigued, maybe surprised, that Everize is playing this well. Though knowing Idra, it might be one of those. Um, I'm, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> a lot of, I guess what I'm trying to say, a lot of the time when he loses, he doesn't really attribute the loss to. Um, you know, good things done by the opponent rather than mistakes that he makes, which, you know, that that, that, that is applicable, but Idra doesn't like giving credit to his opponent a lot, I don't think. Which is fine. I don't give credit to my opponent at all. <laughs> I, I never do. Are you kidding me? Have you played me in ladder? No way. I never throw down that GG. Because whenever I lose, it's never a good game, right? I mean, it's a bad game. Why would I say a GG? Like, I didn't play well. I'm not going to say GG if I didn't play well, if I made mistakes. I'm just kidding. I don't endorse that. I don't support it either. That's the same thing. I don't endorse it, but I don't. I'm not completely against it. You know what? I'm just going to stop talking and talk about the game. Uh, <laughs> Headlines coming forward here from Everest trying to do that economic damage. Oh, T Jones dying at the end there. Now up to 25 workers killed. The Hellion's going right into the main base too in Idra. Uh-oh. Oh, the drones need to get split up. They're just trying to, but a lot of drones dying. Okay, Nidra coming forward with some roaches here. Oh my god, one more shot! Oh no, so many drones died there! 45 workers killed. Nidra down to 47. Nidra needed to have a better SimCity, I think, at the ramp. Down here, you got a wall off. You can't let those Hellions run by. Once those Hellions run by, it's not going to be fun for you. It's not going to be fun at all. Alright. <sighs> okay, well. Idra is up in supply, 118-97. He does have a lot of roaches on the field, but he has to get damage done with these. Will he be able to? There are plenty of banshees in the air for Evra. He's going to be... Uh, throwing their baseballs at the heads of these roaches. Everize turning around with his tanks and Thors. Edra going to try to get some damage done here. Targeting down one tank. Everize caught a little bit off guard, a little bit out of position. Two tanks going down, two Thors remaining. Still Banshees from above doing a lot of damage. One Thor falling, another Thor falling. Idra with some nice aggression here. Not going to go straight for the middle line of his opponent. Targeting down one SCV after one SCV. And definitely a successful attack there from Idra, I would say. He's back up in Harvesters. Units lost should be interesting. 7,300 to 6,400. Um, Itra just trying to go for a cost efficient trade. It's hard to really tell if that was. 110 to 90 is the supply lead for Idra. This is a must win situation for him. He's going to send more roaches across the field trying to get his drone count back up. It's now up to 69. Six more drones on the way. Taking his fourth base, the middle left hand location. And this is good. This is really good play from Idra, going after the economy of his opponent, trying to prevent his opponent from really building up that terrifying Thor army. Taking out a Thor here and there is also obviously going to be a good thing. Blue Flame is now finished researching for those Hellions. Roach is taking out turrets, because why not? These Roaches will end up falling, but again, just going for those cost-efficient trades, going after that economy, trying to slow down that mech production from his opponent. Everybody's getting a lot of Roaches on the field, or a lot of uh, tanks on the field. All right. Three more Hellions from Ember is trying to do some damage. Idris should be wary of this. Has a spine and a decent position. Has roaches there as well. Gonna try to cut off the progress of those Hellions. Uh oh, two Hellions can do a lot of damage, especially with one one. Oh, they're two two now. That, Idris, uh, that Hellion trying to be a hero not gonna be successful. Some Yuna's in the air now here from Idris trying to deflect this Banshee aggression. I love how Idris already has an Overseer here. So even if they cloak and just like, LOL, I can still see you, bro. And there's no Thors here. Oh, those tanks are so exposed. Why didn't he attack them? There's no Thor either. Turret finishing here from Everize. Idra desperately trying to kill it, but it's not going to work. Too many SCVs there repairing. 
great transition into Mutas here from Idra though. And look at this! There's no anti air except for one tank! Idra, try, uh, Ever is actually getting three Thors immediately on the way once he spotted this Muta production. Roach is going straight for that third base of Ever and Idra. He's playing this so well. He was behind a little bit earlier, but making it happen. Idra pretty much denying the progress of this third base. Ever is going to try to do some harassment with Blue Flame Hellions and Banshee to go after the economy of his opponent once again. At the same time, trying to build up that Thor army. Has three on the way at a time. Vehicle weapons, vehicle weapons level three is on the way. Bunch of spores on the way here from Idra and a couple spines. Mutas need to come over here to deal with this. This hatchery is getting dangerously low. Is there a queen on the way? I don't see a queen. Not going to be able to transfuse. There's the overseer. Idra going to target fire down these banshees. Trying to keep these hatchery alive. Spore crawling needs to finish. And it can't finish too soon. Hatchery down to 100 HP. Oh, 75 HP. But staying alive, Idra able to save it for now. But you can bet your bottom dollar that Ever has had that hatchery clicked. And knows exactly how much health is left on it. And he's probably going to go back after it. Ever is now leaving his base. Four Thors here. Plenty of tanks on the ground. Does Idra have enough to engage this? Let's look at his ground army. Not a lot of roaches, not a lot of lings, but a decent amount of mutas. Will he rely on taking out the Thors and then going after the ground army? Because he has a lot of mutas right now. Targeting down a turret there in the main base of Everize. Everize has two Thors about to pop from his factory. Going to have to rely on those to defend against these mutas. Orbital command might go down, get a lift off and float away. But Idra going to try to engage this Thor and tank army at the bottom left hand side. I don't think Idra has enough to deal with this right now. But, oh, okay, well, Ever is just th throwing down the good job. And, wow, well played by Idra. Idra going to take game number two in this best of three, refusing to fall in round number one to Ever Game three coming up after a quick break. Oh man, you guys are funny in the chat. <laughs> okay, I'm having too much fun. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> apparently said. Apparently I said uh, he has no anti-air except one tank. I think I meant one turret. <laughs> All right, here we are. We're back. Welcome back, guys. This is game three of a best of three. In between spotting in the top right hand location, the green Terran player Everise, his opponent in the bottom left of Cloud Kingdom, the red Zerg player Idra from Team Evil Geniuses. <laughs> There's a two minute stream delay, so if you hear me laughing about things in the chat, scroll up two minutes and you'll see it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, TVZ on Cloud Kingdom. Let's do a recap of the games if you're just now joining us. Game 1, we saw a nice mech play from Ever Eyes, nice harassment with Hellions and Banshees. Built up a terrifying Thor army, and Idra has no answer. Tried to go for a Roach drop, but it did not work. It did not work. Ever Eyes, meanwhile, in game 2, was able to fend, to fend off some early Idra aggression. Got, Ever Eyes got a decent amount of damage, and I think he got up to like 40 workers killed. It's pretty crazy. Uh, with his Blue Flame Hellions and his Banshees. Idra eventually able to get a nice composition up uh, of Roaches. He's able to do a lot of aggression. Caught uh, two tanks, or caught like four tanks and two Thors off guard. Killed those pretty easily. And then did a nice transition into Mutas. Um, it's two racks. I think it is. 
Yeah, and the mutas were able to do a decent amount of damage. There's a turret in the middle line. But that was enough. One turret was not enough. Where's my scoreboard? All right. I'm gonna try to focus. I've been reading. I've, I've been reading my chat too much during games, which has been distracting me. And it's like it's a little bit more pointless to read my chat because there's a two-minute stream delay, so it's really hard to interact with you guys. Though understand that I do love you, and I do appreciate that you uh, you upvoted the Reddit thread and you upvoted the, the comment about me needing to work on my casting. As long as it was constructive, I mean that's fine. But Emra is going for a two racks play here. Um, wasn't too. It's not like it was 11-11, and these two racks are on his side of the map. Edge is going to scout it out. And I could see Everise putting an expansion down behind this. Um, you know, it's definitely doable. He's going to start trying to make a bunker at his opponent's side of the map. Idris going to spot that, this out. Needs to target fire that SAV. Needs to prevent that bunker from finishing. But yeah, I mean, Everise, Everise isn't, like, investing a crazy amount into this aggression. I think his racks was on, like, 13-15. It wasn't, like, 11-11. He was squeezing in SCVs. He's still making SCVs as we speak. Income type 18-17. So definitely economic minded is Everize right now. Going to try to make some more bunkers here. Edra is prepared though, pulling from, pulling some drones. Doesn't want to lose any though. Going to try to surround this marine. Going to be oh, partially successful. One drone does fall, and Idra, it's tenlings on the way, and that should be enough to deflect this. Now, Idra has to be careful not to overreact here. Uh, I think he's made. He needs to stop making lings. I think. I feel like these lings should be enough, but again, just being safe, which is fine. Everybody's trying to microwave those those marines, but Idris is gonna be just fine against has so many lings on the field. Um, again, with this spine and all those lings, like you can just drone from here on out. Because again, Everys, it wasn't like he pulled a lot of SCVs with that. Only pulled about two SCVs. Is my overlay up? Oh no! 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 <laughs> no! Dang it! Arr! This is a failed... I'm going to turn the stream off. This is a failed production. Everything that can possibly go wrong has gone wrong. Oh my god, how do I recover from this? It's. I feel like Tony Romo in the Super Bowl. When he was like... It, it was like a playoff game against Seattle. It was a wild card game. He was trying to get to the next round. He needed the, they needed the field goal to win. And, and Tony Romo fumbles the snap. And everyone absolutely hates him. Oh. Okay, I'm going to make a pack to you guys because this is absolutely unacceptable. I'll eat a bolt. No, I'm not I'm, I'm not going that. <laughs> you know what? I'm trying to endorse radio casting. Can we go with that? How about that? Does that work? Is that a good out? I'm trying to endorse I'm trying to work on my ability to commentate a game without you being able to see it. So, I would suggest um, you know, close your eyes one of these games and just see if I can bring the like, if I can bring the experience to you without a visual aid. Oh my god, Edra going after this barracks. This barracks is gonna fall and Edra gonna get by. This is not good at all for Everize. Is this game? Oh no, the supply depot wasn't raised! Idra getting wings inside his opponent's main base. Everize going for a very fast third. Okay, here come the Marines. Whew. Every <laughs> Everyone is so mad in the chat. I know, gosh, I know. Alright. <laughs> Marines tracking down these links from Idra, but how much damage were they able to do? I just need to stop reading the chat. <laughs> I need to stop doing it. <laughs> stop it. Alright, five Jones on the way for Idra. Let's see, what's the income? 37 to 25. Idra doing very well with that income tab. Uh, has two gases right now. Lo no layer on the way just yet, which is relatively interesting. Speed is halfway done. There's one Evo Chamber. <laughs> okay. Stop reading the chat. Stop it. Marines. Charge into the middle there. Taking out a lane. We have a Baneling Nest on the way here from Idra. Now, what is Everaz going to do this game? I mean, his opening was dramatically different from last game. Is he going to go for the mech, uh, the mech style again? We have two factories in his main base. Three, mi three, mi three barracks at the natural expansion.
Marine's going towards this third Idra. Can he hold it off? It's going to be cancelled. Ouch! A queen dying too. Idra did not need to lose that. Uh, but Evra is doing a good job with these Marines, able to deny that third. This is a pretty good timing here, before Idra really has tried tech teching it all. I mean, all he has is speed on the way for those links. 1-1 one, one just now beginning. Doesn't have a layer, so it's not like he's going up to... Ooh, it looks like Idra's going to try to go for a flank. Might go for a counterattack. But there's plenty of barracks here, so I don't see that being uh, successful. Maybe hoping the barracks is going to be lifted off. You know, why not go for something like that? Marines going to the watchtower. Now, Evra is... Are these Marines forfeit? I mean, you don't just want to throw away Marines ever. So at what point does he start returning home? But Idra is not making any links right now. Let's see here. Units tab. Only 20 links. So he shouldn't be able to kill this Marine Force from Everize. Everize does have Blue Flame on the way, so he's going for the factory play once again. Why not? It worked so well in the last game. Lee's going to try to track down these Marines. Isn't that going to be enough? Everize trying to kite back his weakened Marines, but it looks like Idra should... Nope. Marines are going to be fine. Not sure why Idra chose to engage there. Not the most optimal position. Obviously, optimally would be to engage out here where you can get a nice, nice surround. Um, engaging to a troke is never a good thing when you're a Zerk. But Everize did a decent job of positioning himself. Ooh, nice little scan there. Let's see what he saw. He saw an evolution chamber. And the macro hatch in the lair. Spire on the way here from... Eberize. Eberize was probably looking for whether or not that started, or whether his opponent was going for the infestation pit tech. Third hatchery is on the is on the ground here from Idra, putting down two gases at his third. Got one spine on the way. Another one going to be reburrowing. Eberize with plenty of blue from Hellings, and oh my gosh, Idra is not going to be able to recognize this. He hasn't recognized this yet. Like he doesn't have any roaches. He doesn't even have a roach one. He's still producing lings. And guess what? We have a lot of blue from Hellings coming forward. Idra has no idea. Ca caught completely off guard. Immediately needs a Roach Warren. He's making eight more lings, though. And this is going to be so scary for Idra. He needs money baneling detonations here. But Everest can just kite back all day long. Two banelings not getting the best hits off. And all of a sudden, Idra is out of units. Trying to make 18 more lings. Might have to rely on the mutas that are going to come out. But behind this, Everest is taking a third. Keep in mind, none of these units are gas intensive. These are all Marines and all Hellions. As a Terran player, you can kind of afford to lose these units. It's not like you're throwing away gas here. Um, you're throwing away minerals. And since you have mules, look at all this. Look at all the money that Everize has. 2k minerals. Behind this, taking that third, that's what's important. These tanks, that's what's important. Adding on two additional factories and two additional command centers is Everize. A little bit sloppy with his macro behind that offensive. Workers killed shows 6 to 4. Idra at 66 harvesters to his opponent 65. We have 5 meters on the way from Idra. Also, Baneling Speed about to finish. Sticking to the uh, sticking to the Zergling upgrades, which is relatively surprising considering he spotted all those Blue Flame Hellions. And Everize is in fact going for mech, and that could be very dangerous. If you're going for a lot of lings and your opponent has and your opponent has Blue Flame Hellions involved uh, in play on the field, how do you kill Blue Flame Hellions with lings? You have to have miraculous surrounds. Um, of course, you could say, oh, use mutas. But relying on mutas for defense is kind of tricky because the DPS isn't incredible. Everybody's might scan here to clear out some creep. There we go. Gonna clear this creep away. Alright. Gonna go for a Hellion drop as well. I really like this. Like, the mutas are right now are following these Hellions, so Everybody should know that his path along the bottom is gonna be clear. But this hatchery gonna spot this meta back. So we'll have to see if Idra can prepare for this. I don't know if he saw that on the minimap. Um, any queens getting into position? No, I don't think he saw it. So we'll have to see how much damage Everize can do with these blue flame at the same time. Going to try to run by into the natural with these Hellions, I would imagine, and into the third with with um, with these. We might see. Medivac going right into the main base. The Medivac down to 30 HP. Queens trying to come forward to target that down. The Hellions getting out, going straight for that mineral and Idra, returning some links back. So the drone damage isn't going to be incredibly bad. Eberize, sending some Hellions to the natural expansion as well as to the fourth base. The natural expansion, they're getting cleaned up. But here come the ones to the third base, going after that drone line. Idra splitting away some of those drones. So that, that, I'll sum up that with it could have been a lot worse. I actually think, all things considered, Idra did a great job defending against that harassment. Workers killed. Oh my god. Oh, wait, okay. 
Oh, it just confused me because the scoreboard is opposite of this. Okay, 13 workers killed. That's not incre That's not terrible for Itra, considering he sent about eight Hellions there, one Medivac. That's uh, a lot of investment, only to kill about six drones. So, really good job defending there from Idra. Everize definitely wanted to do a lot more damage than that. In the meantime, Everize doing what he has been doing this entire series, building up that Thor account while harassing with Blue Flame Hellions. Keep in mind, this fourth was able to get up from Idra. Everize did spot this, but he didn't send any units down here to try to deny this. He might do that a little bit later. He might do that right now, actually. Three Hellions taking control of that watchtower. Idra should probably put down a spine or two back here, just in case to deal with any blue flame hellion harassment. Vikings patrolling around the field, looking for those overlords. Idra going up to Hive, Path to Glance almost done. Plus one missile attacks about halfway done. Glau reconstitution, 80% of the way done. So going into the Roach production, realizes his opponent is going for mech, and realizes he has to do something to halt the progress of the mech production. Is it gonna be drops? Oh, this hellion trying to be fancy and catch these drones. But look at this, Everize already saturating this fourth base, Planetary Fortress almost done, saturating the gases immediately. Alright. Nice! I love this Roach position here! It just makes me so happy inside. Um, because Everize, if he decides to attack it, obviously this would be the most likely path. If, if Edra has Roaches here, guess what? The Hellions aren't going to do much. Idra preparing like he wants to do some uh, aggression here, going up to Broodlord. Look at that production tab for Idra. Ridiculous amount of stuff going on. Has two spires on the field. Two spires, I should say. Making one into a greater spire. His minerals and gas is okay. Really needs to start prioritizing that gas. But the problem is, Everize again, building up that crazy Thor number. Also, has that fourth base where he can put... Uh, the gas is already saturated. So Everize is not going to be starving on money for quite a bit here. And he's already maxed. So we'll have to see if Everize, Everize tries to go for some crown aggression. Idra putting those spines down at his fourth base. Hellion's going right for the middle line. Burrow drones. Our right, drone's burrowing here. Scan going down from Everize, trying to kill these. Edge going to unburrow and split them up. Trying to run away, but oh no, they're lighting up a little bit. The Hellions trying to get their shots off, but... Alright, again, that wasn't as bad as it could have been for Idra. But I feel like Idra's the guy that still has some work to do. I mean, we have a max. This is probably one of the scariest armies in the game. These are 2-2, two, 3-3... Two, three, three is... Oh, actually, this is... Oh, 2-1. Might start 3-3 fairly soon. Three starports on the way. Everize, what are you up to, my friend? This is so... It's... Okay, the thing about this map, it's pretty darn hard to engage as a Zerg player. If your opponent is really good with his leapfrogging, with his tanks, how do you engage it? Because every engagement you can choose involves usually a choke of some sort. But here we go. Idra going to go for it. Target firing the Thors with those roaches. Infestors throwing down those fungal growths. But look at this. The roaches absolutely melting to this army. Idra doesn't have close to enough. Five Brewlords in production, though. Will Idra be knocked down to the lower bracket of this qualifier for IEM China in round number one against the Terran player Everize? It could happen. Everize going to be engaged in the space at the bottom. Oh my god, and all these tanks. This is going to die in one shot. If all these tanks targeted this hatchery, I wonder how fast it would die. One shot? Okay, three shots and it's dead. Easy peasy. Tanks need to unsiege now. Edra trying to get Broodlords in play, but again, like, Everize doesn't care too much. Guess what? He just killed this expansion. He just killed this expansion. Keep in mind, he's still running around the Hellions doing economic damage. Now Edra's only on three bases, one of them mining, two of them mining. Everize can just retreat, repair these Thors, get remaxed. He still has four bases. He still has eight gases. He's going to be just fine. And Edra is still in a world of trouble. Edra bringing forward the Infestors here, trying to get those Fungals off. Has the Brutalers here as well, but we already have the Viking production on the way here for Everize, anticipating uh, the tech switch. Five Vikings just now popping out. He has ten on the field already. How does Idra deal with the mass Viking count? I don't have an answer for you. The only hope is money fungals. Ridiculously good fungals. Idra trying to get some cost efficient trades in, attacking these stores, but here come the Vikings and that has to be so disheartening for Idra, seeing all those Vikings in the air and watching his Broodlords melt away. Idra trying to make it work though, uh, trying to make it work though, searching forward with these Roaches and Infestors. A second Planetary Fortress here for Idra, or for Everize I should say. Idra needs to fungle these Vikings if he can. The Vikings just gonna land and target fire down these Infestors, but this is not looking good for Idra. There go the Fungals. Now the good news is, I think the majority of the Thors were killed, so Everize is gonna have to remake those. How many does he have on the field? His four on the field. So Idra killed, killed a good amount there. 
18k nearly to 16k on resources. 2k difference there. Each Idra rebuilding this, this base at the middle left-hand location. Rebuilding this one at the middle right bottom. I don't know what to call it. Still some uh, drones burrowed in the ground. Idra's not happy. You know, it's it's hard to engage something like this. Like, how do you break this as a Zerg? It's it's very difficult um, to engage this. You have to come down this ramp, maybe coming from the right hand side. But if your if your opponent is just sieging up, putting down planetary fortresses, and just methodically marches his way, taking additional expansions, it's hard to deal with. Edge is going to try to do some harassment on the high ground with those infestors. Killing a good amount of SCVs and mules. Oh no! But his entire all of his infestors might die here. Yeah, they're all going to die. Ling's coming forward, and Roaches. And... He might do a small dent to this army, but all of his Roaches and Ling's are going to die. And... Idra, down to 142 supply. Idra, uh, Everize, I should say, is at 165. One, uh, one Thor in production, three tanks, and he's going to... do some aggression towards this base the middle left. Lead frogging those tanks. Idra trying to make it happen. Seven more Broodlords on the way. He lost all his investors though. That's it's definitely problematic. How are you going to deal with these Vikings? I guess you can try to use Corruptors? Alright, we'll see what happens here. Idra moving forward with all these Broodlords. Three Corruptors there as well. Plenty of Lings underneath. But <laughs> what are Lings going to do at this point? Especially when your opponent has so many Blue Hellions, Or has Blue Hellions, Or has the ability to make Blue Hellions? We have six on the field. Um, everyone's just playing this game pretty darn cool. Very methodically. Slow and steady. Going after the economy, and Idris just going to leave the game. Realize it's, it's probably a lost cause. My opponent has way too much. Um, way too many bases. And Everize going to take down Idra 3 to 1. Or 2 to 1, I should say. Excuse me.